Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. We're continuing work on our 5000 ball bearing pattern welded Damascus steel knife here. Now that we've heat treated it, straightened it, reheat treated it, and done some surface grinding, I can begin grinding the bevels on this blade. I'm using the work rest on my grinder to help me index the bevels or the grinds to the spine. I've got my railroad tracks, as it were, marked on the edge of the blade and that really helps guide where I need to put these grinds. I'm taking my time trying to put as much care and attention to detail into this as possible with a reasonable expenditure of time. Altogether, I, I didn't really time myself on the grinding but at least an hour just to rough grind the blade I would say right around there. Looking pretty good and really paying attention to the flatness and uh, consistency of the bevels. We had a little cold snap as did everyone in the country and my ammonia water froze up and trying to thaw that out a little bit and stay warm as I begin the hand sanding process. I'm only going to go up to 220 grit and we'll leave it there for a while as we continue on the other parts of this build. The reason for that of course is I don't want to get it up to a high finish and then risk scratching it and having to go back and rehand sand. At this point it's going to get some minor scuffs and stuff like that but we're only at 220 grit so that's all going to come out anyway. Doing everything including the spine, the swedge, the ricasso, getting that all sanded in a uniform manner. Now we can begin working on the guard. I've never made a guard quite like this before but I have an idea of what I want in my mind and I'm starting with some mild steel. This is three quarter inches thick. I really don't know how much I'm gonna need so I just guesstimated and we'll do a preliminary forging practice here and figure out how to build this. I want to make some kind of an S guard and so I need to forge out the top and bottom of the guard, the finger guard and the top of that. I'm not sure what that's called, the, the quillins maybe? I'm not sure. using that free die to step down the portions of the guard. And right about here is where I realized I didn't really have enough material. This stock is only three quarter inches wide and the finished dimensions need to be about that. So it's a little bit too narrow. But I think the theory is sound and so just making sure that we can follow through and build what I'm thinking of. Here goes the next try, a little bit bigger piece of stock. And first I'll need to forge it down to a little bit wider dimensions. You can see it's going to be more of a square cross-section rather than a rectangular, and that seemed to be the ticket. I like to incorporate some drop forging into the process at times, as you see there. Taking it easy and forging those quillins down. If that's not the right word for it, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'm sure somebody knows what to call those correctly. You'd rather have more stock than not enough, and that's what we have here. But it's not a big deal because you can forge it or cut it off or whatever, grind it away. You just need to make sure that you have enough material to build what it is you're trying to make. And of course within reason, but you can become obsessive about trying to get just the right amount of stock and then risk not having enough. That's worse than having a little extra uh, waste stock. That's just kind of part of the game. Got a rough forged and and uh, grinding off some scale. I don't have a milling machine. If I did, all of this uh, stuff that you see here would be a breeze. Instead, I'm utilizing my surface grinding attachment from Beaumont Metalworks because that's the next best thing that I have. And the magnetic chuck was sufficient to hold on to the guard and get all four surfaces squared up with each other, which is the thing that I'm most concerned with. 
Of course, they have to go in and take care of the radius or radii on the other side of the guard. But it worked pretty well overall, and that's what I'm concerned with is a, a true square piece of material that we can begin to fit to the blade or to the tang of the blade. I want to mark a center line on my guard blank here that we forged out. So we can begin drilling material out and uh, slotting that guard. First, I need to make sure the shoulders on my Ricasso are clean and true. And so using a file and a uh, file guide, carbide file guide, will make sure that's good to go. Prep the tang a little bit more before we proceed with fitting the guard. start by center punching where I want to drill some holes. This is pretty important of course, particularly when you're hand drilling things. I'm going to use my drill press vise and hopefully that'll keep everything true and straight to the table and to the spindle of the drill press. You can see here that I should have this clamped down after I've indexed to the hole that I'm drilling because it's uh, it's not super stable here. Now I'm drilling 5 16 inch thick holes, there you go, in the back of the guard to relieve a lot of that material that we really don't need to file out and try to fit to the tang. And I'll leave, you know, about a 3 16 of an inch to the front of the guard and that remaining material will need to be carefully filed and fitted to the tang. Again, this would be a breeze with a milling machine, but you, not everybody has one. In fact, probably most people don't. Before I get to fitting things, I want to make sure we have a good surface on the front of that guard so I don't have to grind or sand a bunch of material away after fitting it. And so we've re-sanded that and got some blooming compound on there and then remark where the tang needs to sit. Because if you'll look very closely, my drill bit kind of wandered off center a little bit as I was drilling from the backside and they did not end up quite in the center of the front of the guard. Which is not a huge deal, it just needs to be paid attention to and corrected. So we'll do a bunch of filing and fitting, and uh, in the end I did use a little bit of heat to fit this guard. The hottest I got it was to a dull red, and uh, that seemed to help this whole process. I want the shoulders of the Ricasso to indent slightly into the face of the guard, which I was able to do with a little bit of heat. Now that we've got the preliminary fit on the guard, I can begin shaping and removing a whole bunch of material. Again, I'm sort of following a map in my head. I have an idea of what I want it to look like, and hopefully we can accomplish that. Here I'm bending the top quillin or the top part of the S guard and this was a, not what I wanted to happen. It, it kind of kinked and bent rather than curving and of course that's because the thinnest part of the material was in the center of that piece of steel. But using the horn on the anvil and a couple of tries we were able to get it pretty close and we still have quite a bit of material to take off so truing everything up isn't a big deal. So there's our finished S-Guard with the preliminary sanding finish, sanded finish on the guard, and it looks pretty good, I think. 
But then, in a strange twist of fate, I decided to cut it off and make a rather different guard. What What is that going to look like? Well, you're going to have to tune into part three as we finish up this project. So thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next video.